double cases. We got double cases, and we got double cases, and we got double cases. Hey, that's all PlayStation. I'm sorry. We got 3DO. Anyway, we got Dreamcast double cases. So a handful of people asked if I would make a video showing how to disassemble double cases, and I said, heck yeah. They're all pretty much going to be about the same, but I want to make sure that we're covering all the different things that you might see. This isn't a comprehensive list of every single double case game that's out there, but this is this should show you a bunch of different ones. The big thing, and we'll get these out of the way to start with. Hey, you guys should play Parasite Eve, just saying. The big thing is that the insides are going to be a little different. So depending on what the game is supposed to have, depending on the packaging, this centerpiece will be different. It's not always going to be the same, too. So sometimes it'll have four, and we have a couple in here that have four disc holders. I'm just throwing things around here that have the four disc holders in there. Sometimes we'll have those. Sometimes it'll have two. Sometimes it should have four and only has three, and the other one's just loose hanging out and floating around. Sometimes it, it, it depends. It really, really depends especially on this center one, what it has. This Parasite Eve, this is, I got this, I think at launch, I'm pretty sure at launch, or at least close to it. So this is correct, where it has the manual that goes into this slot, and you'll notice that this slot doesn't have any retention tabs. And then on the back side is the retention tabs for the demo disc, or the collector's CD. And then on the back, retention tabs, and on the front retention tabs. There is not, in this world, as far as I know, a comprehensive list of what all cases should come with the games. And you say, well, if it's brand new in box, or if I got it at launch, most of the time that's true. There are some cases, I get it, cases, where Sony, instead of, you know, coming out with the same case over and over, changed the case mid-production. You see that a lot more in PlayStation 2. That does happen in PlayStation 1 sometimes where they had the environmental-friendly packaging. Or if they stop doing... So this has includes the 1998 Collector CD. If there was a version that came out there that didn't have the 1998 Collector's Edition CD, then it wouldn't necessarily have this retention tab on the side. Make sense? Cool. So... The big thing about these is that this center black piece is very temperamental. This center black piece can snap very easily, and you'll see that we'll even go through the other cases that I have. You'll see some of them. It probably isn't the original. It probably broke at some point, and they had to modify it and figure it out. Sometimes, and this is, this is where it's going to be kind of confusing, and it depends, it depends, it depends. Sometimes you can get away with having the inverse of this. So this front piece, this little piece here, is the inverse of this little piece. It depends. Let's take this apart and let me show you all the different parts that I'm talking about so you can see. And this won't be like a comprehensive, this is every single thing under the sun. This is basically just, a, I'm going to show you this handful. It might be different for you. So same idea on here where you see that there's a little, the seam goes right here. Let me get a pointer before I start using my big old fingers. Let's find a good pointer. That's a good one. So you'll notice that there's the plastic ridge right there, and then it drops down right there to allow this tab, okay? So this is, one part just a design feature kind of thing, and another part just a clever way for them to hide the retention pin that's underneath there that is keeping this on here. It's the same concept as the PlayStation 1 video that I did not too long ago where you want to lift up and push out. See? So you can see right there... Get that light out of the way. You can see right there that there's the retention tab right there. And there's really nothing in there you would still have to lift up, but there is a ledge in there. Again, this is a lot easier to do when you're not wearing gloves, but I want to show you what I'm talking about. Now you'll notice, let me get this out first and then we can talk about it. 
You'll notice that this is nice and smooth, but there's more of an opening. Come on, camera. There's more of an opening on this back side than there is on the front side to slide out this retention tab, okay? I still like to go backwards rather than forwards. So I still like to lift up on the, on the black center piece, lift up, slide it in there, and then fit it in. Zoom in a little bit so you can see. So I still like to lift up on there. And with gloves, it's kind of hard because I can't feel the pressure as much. You can't always get a little spudger in there, a little plastic tool, and just push up very gently onto this, okay? So back on it goes. Let me show you with, oh, how about a guitar pick, okay? So same idea, you're gonna lift up on there and just lift up just enough to release it. When you're using your fingers, the problem is your fingers are kind of chunky, especially chunky if you have gloves on. And so to pry and push under there, if I'm pushing here, it's gonna bend this entire piece of plastic. Camera does not wanna focus, it's mad at me. It's gonna bend that entire piece of plastic on there. So it's a lot better to get something thin under there, push backwards, and you're off and running. And then just lift straight up for the bottom, you just lift on it straight up, and that gets it taken off. You will probably break some of these. This is just kind of flimsy plastic. It's cheap plastic. Her face is making it auto focus. There we go. This is just cheap plastic. You will break some of these. It's it's just kind of how it goes. I've I've broken a ton. Um, it, it, these are these for whatever reason just seem to die a lot faster than anything else. Same idea. You get your tool underneath. And I'm just twisting a little bit. So tool underneath, twist just a little tiny bit as I'm pushing backwards, and off it goes. Let's see if I can do it right-handed, because because I'm wrong-handed. So right-handed, you push it on there, you twist, you push back, same idea. Can you go forward? Yes, but the problem is you got to go through this whole thing, so it's a lot better to just the least amount of resistance, the shorter path forward, and then this is where it's key. You don't want to bend forward. You want to lift straight up. So it's straight up and off the tab. If you bend, you'll start to chew into these retention tabs. And you can see that these retention tabs have seen, everything wants to focus, have seen some action. Okay, So they're, they're a little worn down. Um, you can brush these off. You can, you can clean these up how you want to. It doesn't really do too much. It doesn't help it in the long run, but you always can. See, and these are just kind of a sacrificial pins that are just gonna break down. So then we have our back panel. Get out. Our front panel. So the other big thing, and I should have shown this in the other video, um, but I wanna make sure that people know that there are a lot of different tools that you can use. Again, resist the urge to pry with your fingers like I'm doing here and get some thin tool in there just to open up the seams. And we're going to open up the back here. Why all the precaution? Well, these tiny, tiny little tabs, you can't even see them on that one. But you can see them on here, these tiny, tiny, little, tiny tabs or what's holding the back panel on. That's nothing. And you can see how worn down these are. So each time you pry on them, you scrape them and everything, it's, it's gonna put more wear and tear onto it. So we have our back panels. We'll do the same thing with the side panel. There's a little lip right here that you can kind of get your fingers under, but honestly, for me, I much rather get a tool in there so I can pry a little bit and then you want to work your way around to the side to get that first retention pin off. Okay. Same thing on here. Find the seam, work down on the seam. So what we're doing here is we get down onto the seam and then we're just working just a little bit, prying it open on there. Um, these, they're not actually called guitar picks. They're called opening tools, spudgers. They probably have some real name that I'm not thinking of that'll post in the video. Um, these are fairly common. You'll find them in electronics opening 
kits. Um, you'll find them in a lot of different like how-to tools and everything. iFixit sells them, Amazon sells them, everybody sells them. I have these that kind of work the same way. Um, I have these that have a combination of both. I got this guy. I got these that you can see I use these a ton. Oh, what else do we have? And then just a bunch of these little picks. So I always buy just handfuls and handfuls and then keep them around because you never know. Okay. So we get the front cover off. Now, y'all want to see something cool? These two pieces are the same, okay? So these two pieces, this piece and this piece are the same. So this is, if you remember, actually, let me get this out because this will make more sense this way. Um, so this piece where the disc is being held here is this right here, like this. And then on the back, it is this same piece just flipped upside down. And we know this because compact disc is printed there and compact disc is printed there upside down. So it's a clever little thing where you can get away with reusing these on the front or the back if it says compact disc upside down on the one side. There are some, and I don't know if we'll get into any of these, but I'll see if I can find one. There are some where it is specifically just for the one side, so you go based on where it says compact disc, and it won't say it upside down. So... Those are the same pieces. The front and back plates, okay? So we have the front and back plates, and we have this guy, and we have this guy. Check this out. The front plate, see that? The front plate and the back plate are the same as well. So this front plate right here is the same as this little guy, and this back plate right here is the same as this little guy. Again, you might find some variations where that's not the case. Ha, get it, case? You'll find some variations where that's not the case. It just depends. It's pretty rare, though. They were actually pretty smart in what they did. So you see in Grandia, we have compact disc and compact disc upside down. In the Daedalus encounter, it doesn't say anything. It's probably a generic. Well, no, actually, I think, I don't know. I remember I started to research this and then gave up because it got weird. A plate there and a plate there for branding. I got this and it had this in it, which I thought was really interesting because it was a cut piece from something else that someone cut specifically sized and then put that in there. And I'm like, that's weird. I need to keep that forever. This piece that the disc is being held into and the back panel is the same as this front piece the retention panel in here. Same thing, okay? Really, the only thing that you're going to run into that might be a little different is this. So on this one, we have no retention pins on this side, retention pins on the front side. On this X-Files one, you'll see that we have retention pins on the front side. They're also poorly spaced. And then we have retention pins on the back side. But even in this case... This panel is going to be the same. You see compact disc is upside down on there. This plate's going to be the same. The front's going to be the same as the back. I know, right? A crack. I wonder if there's a way to fix that. Hmm. That's a video for way, way later. So this is the same as this. This is the same as this. And an easy way to remember the different parts is that there's a big hole here. See a big old hole? And there's a big panel right here. And those two things just go in together. How about that? So to reassemble, we're gonna take our back piece, set our back piece down. I like to go into this side and then press down first. And the reason that I like to do that is that this side can get wrinkled. So zoom in a little bit. So see this side here can get wrinkled sometimes and get caught on this lip. So to avoid that, I like to go down and in on this side, push and push, down and in on this side, and then really keep my eye on this side to make sure that I'm not getting any of that cover art in there. So see? 
and it's kind of hard to see because of the cameras and everything else, but you'll see that the Parasite Eve cover art is nice and flush. It's not getting folded over. You won't see that too much. Usually if they're in pretty good condition, you'll see that it's a nice stout little corner. It is perforated, so it can, that's creepy. It is perforated, so it can start to fold over more than it needs to. Um, if you see that, that can be a sign that it has been recased at some point. So if you do get the cover art out and you notice that this is all boogered up and mangled up, that can be a sign that there has been some fishy business going on. So just something to keep an eye out for. Again, when you're taking these out, resist the urge to just grab on this and pry. The big, big reason is that you're going to wear down these pins. Okay? And as you wear down these pins, this becomes less and less useful. You can't really do anything about it. You can replace these pieces, but I'd rather not have to. So we slip the front end, make sure the front's all nice and good. We push that down into the retention pins. Now, why do I not put a tool in there and wedge it out and push it down into it? Most of these are taken apart and people salvage the pieces from them and everything. So they're going to pry it up and the damage is going to come from the bottom side up. From the front side down is the opposite force of what normally happens, and it's also going to be the less consistent force that gets applied to it. So realistically, I probably should get a tool down in there, and I'll show you on this side. Get a tool down in there, pry it out, and let it sit into its retention pins, realistically. But the less prying you have to do on those edges, I think the better. You want to pry it once to be able to get it out and running, and that's about it. So, back to these guys. And remember, we'll take it, we'll drop it straight onto its pin. And then same idea on here. You get the tool underneath it, and I'm just lifting a little bit. And if you're right-handed, heck, I don't know. If you're right-handed, get your tool in there, and you lift it up a little bit and just let it sit in there. You'll know you did it right if everything seems up really nice and cozy. Um, the only thing that can happen is it won't, it won't fit in perfectly, and I'll just do this as an example. It won't sit in perfectly, and you'll get it to be bumped up like this. You see how that's a little crooked and angled? Um, then you'll know that that's not how she should go. Same idea on this. You secure the bottom pin. You get your tool in there, you twist, and you push in. Now you notice, let me see if I can get it to do it again. You notice it overshot, okay? So see how it overshot and see that bending on there again? That can happen too. Not a huge deal, you just want to make sure that you pry it back forward, and then it should swing freely. If it were to go too far back and get caught up in the back there, and you tried to swing it, it's not going to swing, it's not going to hinge, okay? So you just make sure that it's seated on the hinge nice and comfortably, and it can swing like normal. So we get all of our discs. If I can remember how all of these go, those are the two back discs. That's the front one. And I talked about this a bit in the last video, but why the caution? You know, why the excessive, hey, I have to be careful, this is all very delicate. Well, these double cases are getting very, very rare. They are getting fairly uncommon. And you can use them from resellers, you know, CD resellers and stuff. They'll make them and you can and you can buy those double cases. Even that's pretty uncommon. You don't get a lot of three and four disc CDs floating around. So it's a little ounce of prevention to keep games in pretty good condition. I still gotta clean that manual. It's a little ounce of prevention to keep games in pretty good condition to last longer. Um, and to me, that's that's just the key. That's an important, important thing where, yeah, absolutely, I want these things to last as long as they can, but I also don't want to have to put new cases on them all the time. So I might as well develop methods that allow me to not have to worry about it. And it might seem silly. It might seem kind of goofy. Um where it's like you're, you're going, you know, at these weird lengths. Sure, but look up most of the games that you have that are two, three, and four discs, and you'll find that the majority of them are actually more 
in-demand games. You'll have some that maybe aren't as expensive, but you'll have a lot of games that a lot of people really want because it had the two, three, and four discs. Part of it was the production values where to have a three-disc game, it better have been an amazing game, or you better had a publisher that wanted to pay for it, that kind of thing. Only other thing I want to note on here is on the side here, it'll say how many discs it should have. What that three discs means is that it should have three discs. So if you open it up and it does not have the 1998 Squaresoft Collector's CD Volume 1, you'll know that something is missing. Okay, This denotes how many discs, period, should be in this case, not... You're not how many to, Parasite Eve One is a two disc game. See, you have disc two, and that's it. But three discs were planned for this production run. Okay, so let's get into another one, and I'll show you. The 3DO doesn't do it. Dreamcast doesn't do it, but we'll do the Dreamcast one. What does do it? Fox Hunt does it. Fox Hunt, it's three discs. And Fox Hunt is a three-disc game. So there is disc three. So that means that there are three discs in there. Uh, X-Files is a four-disc game. It has four discs. But like I said, Parasite Eve is a two-disc game, but it has three discs in this packaging. Just a neat little way to tell how many discs should be in there. It doesn't always have this nice little label on there, too, saying, hey, this is what's in here. So we'll do Grandia. You'll notice that things are looking pretty similar for us. So that's the Grandia music selections. Now, we'll do a little quiz. Grandia is a one disc game. Okay, Grandia 2 is a one disc game for the Dreamcast. If something were to be printed on here that said how many discs should be in this bundle, you'll see there's nothing on the front. How many discs should be on this bundle? What would the side say? Okay, the side would say two discs. I don't even think... It says, okay, no, it does say it. Includes additional CD or Grandia music. But it doesn't say it on the front like this guy does. Um, so it should say two discs on the side there because this should come with two discs. Makes sense? It's one of those things that it seems really, really obvious. Um, and it was something that we did a bunch of. And look at this chunky manual. Look at that. Remember when they used to? It seems like it's something really obvious. Um, but when I pointed it out to people at GameStop, when you were taking in games to see if something was missing, it was like this mind-blowing thing where you're like, what? I didn't know I could do that. That's crazy. I also just like Dreamcast discs. I don't know why. I just Dreamcast is a, such an interesting system. I'll do a bunch of videos on Dreamcast. Um, but it's just such an interesting system. Look at that. Look at that. Such a cool system that I, I feel like... I don't want to say it's underrated, but I feel like there's a lot of depth to it that, that people are finding out. There was a guy I was talking to not too long ago that just got um, Blue Stinger, and it was just kind of like, how is this not more commonly known? It's like, yeah, we know. Same idea with this one. Get your tool. Let me show you with a different tool. Um, credit cards don't really work. I wish they did. They don't really work. Let me show you with one of these little guys. It's an opening tool. Same idea though, you get it on there and you push out, lift straight up. We'll do the back side. Get that out of the way so don't mash her up. Tool underneath there. Hey, let's pretend like we're right-handed. I'm accepted by society. I'm right-handed, hooray. Lift up there, slide it back, lift it up. So, fun story about being left-handed. I actually had a... Um, I had a kindergarten teacher that was also left-handed, and she showed me how to do left-handed things. I had a first-grade teacher that was not left-handed, and she made me sit at a right-handed desk, and she said that kids can get by by writing right-handed. They just have to try harder. <laughs> Go figure. So see on there, the pins are actually looking pretty good. You can see, and I don't know, the camera probably won't pick this up. Oh, it does. Okay, cool. Pointer. So see what I mean about the damage where this is where it's getting pressed in and it's angled down and then this is the retention that holds it in there and this is getting pressed in. So it's actually angled intentionally to allow it to slide in there. You see the same thing on the bottom. 
there's a bit of a miter, a bit of an angle right there that allows it, come on camera, well, whatever, you saw it, that allows it to get pressed in so you can push it in there and it'll snap on. So see, we'll put it in there. But still, if you just do this flat out like this, you'll get some resistance. You'll get enough resistance that it's like, well, it's not really worth risking blowing out that tab. So you might as well get something in there, lift it up a little bit, and you're good to go. Oh no, oh no. That's something that'll happen, but you can't, you can't do it wrong because it won't let you close it. So something to keep your eye out for. I did that intentionally, don't worry. Something to keep your eye out for where if the case just doesn't wanna close, that's potentially the reason. Um, and probably it makes sense to right-handed people way more. I don't know. So set this down flat. Get your one retention tab on there. Get your tool underneath there. Lift up, and it'll fit in there. Give it a test swing. It should swing just fine. Like I said, if it's not swinging just fine, you'll know. You can see that it's bowing up. You can see that it's not wanting to close correctly. There you go. Now we'll do the front. Same idea on the front. Get your retention tab down on there. I'm using this tool, that's right, that's right. Lift up a little bit. Same idea, it doesn't really want to swing. And it closes okay. There we go. But a lot of times when you close it, if it does close completely, that just means that it sat into the ridge there. So that mitering on the retention tab is actually pretty useful intentionally so that it makes it, so that it just fits in nice and, I mean, look at this manual. Look at how chunky. That's nuts. How many pages? 61, 63 pages. Man. Reading manuals, I, I was 100% the demographic of kids that would read manuals on the way home. That was me all day long. I would have had this thing read three times before we got home from the mall. What year was this? 2000. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. Last one we'll do, since all the ones are pretty similar, um, is a 3DO one. <laughs> this 3DO one's missing things. I have the Daedalus Encounter in a long box, but I got this one just because it was selling for cheap and... I don't know if you know this, but it's an FMB game. And I don't know if you know this, but I really like FMB games. Um, not to brag or anything, but uh, <clears throat> do I have every version of Night Trap? <laughs> well, yes, yes, I do. So no one's impressed, but hey, no big deal. So, you know, so this one kind of didn't want to go. Oh, you can see the ridge a lot better on this one. So see that? See that ridging there? Yeah, not nothing here, but down here there's a definite little slope. So means we're doing it right. Same thing on here. Get the tool under, lift. What were what you doing? I'm also trying to avoid the camera. There we go. Lift. Good to go. So then, same thing on this one. Back panels are the same as the front panels. I, I'm realistically, hey, let's do this, and then, and then we'll be done. So we'll take this. Use our little guitar pick this time because we're fancy. Get that sat in there. And then we'll do the back. Secure it onto the pin. Little tool in there. Close it up because we're fancy. Oh no! But, oh no. It's upside down and backwards. But that's actually fine. <laughs> so that's what I mean when I say that, that it's entirely exchangeable. What's happening though, it, it's interesting because you can tell that it hasn't been like this before is that the retention tabs, see how this, like, that's a bit of force and see how this is still bowing out. It'll close, you know, it'll close and secure and everything, but 
it's still having a little bit of resistance. Let me show you what happens. So we'll take the front piece off, and we'll take the back piece off, and it'll actually fix that retention problem where it didn't want to close. So we had it like this, so now I gotta remember what I did. So we'll get the front piece back on there. And basically what this is gonna show you is that as plastic sits, ages, wears, that kind of thing, it conforms. So remember before, this thing didn't wanna close very evenly because the fronts and the backs were on there. Oh no, now the back doesn't wanna do it again. Yeah, no, now it closes with a lot less force. You can't really see it too much. Um, but it's definitely closing cleaner. And the reason that it's doing that is as it's sitting right here, it's just conforming to the space. So as it goes through heat and, and time and everything else, it's just conforming. The pins are conforming. So they're, um, and this is all just a press fit kind of thing. So there's a little bit of retention where there's a little bit more material on this side than you actually need, which is what keeps it nice and closed. See, so I'm just holding it by the top. It's keeping it nice and closed, and it's just it's just pressure that's holding that together. So, not the best FMV game on the 3DO, but hey, we'll accept it for who it is. Can't be the best, because Night Trap exists. And if Night Trap exists, then nothing can be the best. Four... I will get a replacement insert for this, but I don't know. I just think this is so interesting. I've seen these before, but I just I thought it was an interesting thing where the guy's like, oh, I have the wrong insert. Obviously, this has been um, recased, but and then he put that in there, and it's like just perfectly sized. It's wrong, but it's a mod. The other interesting thing to note is that the cover art was printed just on the one side only. Whoa! Buddy. The cover art was printed on just the one side only, so you see Daedalus Encounter printed on this side, nothing in on this side. Um, the other games that we showed, it's like Grandia, it has printing on both sides. That's why we don't collect jewel case 3DO games, in my opinion. Long boys for life, that's what I say. So there you go. That is how to open... I didn't do a four disc, um, but the four disc is basically the same. It, the front's going to be the same. Oh no! Oh no! The back's going to be the same. These retention pins are just terrible. And this is mine from like when it came out. These retention pins just wear out over time. The reason being, and I'll get into all of that later on. The reason being is that these retention pins, the whole point is that you're supposed to push them down to release the disc. So the disc is sitting in here and hypothetically you go push and the disc comes out, that kind of thing. Same thing on the back here, you push and the disc pops out. So see how just a little bit of push, do it with the tool so you can see, pops out. See? These retention tabs will bend over time. Can you bend them back up so that it holds securely? Yes. But then when you go to take the disc back out, you're just going to put it back down on it, undo all of your work, off and running. I actually just replayed this not too long ago. I forgot that it's only like like not even two hours. Um, it's fine. You die in weird ways. Anywho, that is how to disassemble... Two, three, and four disc cases. The big takeaways to remember, same thing on the on the edges, is to get a tool down in there and lift up on these because these things are precious and delicate, as you can see. Delicate. I don't know if you saw that, but this just dumps out the disc all the time. So these inserts are fragile. So anything we can do to make sure that we're not bending out these two tabs on there, always a good thing. And the other trick to remember is the printing on the side to verify how many discs should be in there. 
How sad is this that I said, I'm going to go make a video about multiple disc games, and then stupid me went and just grabbed a bunch of FMV games like you guys wouldn't notice. Like, oh, oh, these games? Who brought these in? That's crazy. I'm going to do a whole video on Sega Saturn games, um, cases for Longbox for PlayStation 1. And Sega Saturn and 3DO and Sega CD. That's a whole separate thing. Until next time, be sure to comment in this video what you want to see more of. Um, feel free to subscribe if you want to. I'm going to try to get more videos out. And thanks for watching and thanks for cleaning. I got so much more to clean. See you guys.